I know what you're trying to do. I'm trying to free your mind, Neo. But I can only show you the door. You're the one that has to walk through it. Okay, we live. Okay. Shalom, shalom, my dear. Uh, this is Amiyan. I'm alive with my brother Yahoo Kanan. Um, he wants to address these Christians labeling us as moderates and you know, speak on it. You know what I'm saying? Certain things the brother want to bring out uh, to let you know dangers in um, labeling people as, as moderates. So we don't want to beat, beat this, this topic up with this, this moderate thing too long. We can move on and start speaking about this coronavirus situation. Some people are thinking that this is the end because I'm hearing some people saying it. The end is near. The end is close. And we are very far from the end. There is there is no antichrist in short his face yet. Like who who is the antichrist? I mean he he has to be on the scene for you to be even saying you're close to the end. Because according to the text, he he said he should be in power for at least three and a half years. At least three and a half years he's gonna at least be in power. So for you to be saying we're near the end and nothing like that, you, you got to show me who this who 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 the antichrist is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So um. You can I you want you want to speak on this this coronavirus and, and, and this and this end time things that people talking about we're near the end? No, I don't I don't think we're near the end. Um my question would be I think this is a judgment of the most high, to be honest with you. Uh some people think this is man-made. And then th this is the thing. If this virus is man-made, that really makes Christianity look bad because it's like this. A man made you ain't got no power to lay hands. And heal people over a man-made virus. You, you see what I'm saying? Right. Like the Bible say, greater is he that is in me that's who's in the world. So it, the Christians say that they the all Christianity is, is where it's supposed to be at. They supposed to have all the power and, and all the righteousness. And you telling me you you can't you can't overcome or you can't cast out a man-made virus. Um, if if you think it's man made, I don't I don't think it's man made. I think this is the judgment of Yahuwah. I think he's purging, you know what I'm saying? And he's doing his his judge his judgment, is his judging coming, and um it's some more to come. Get ready. Uh I, I, I don't think life as we know is gonna be the same anymore. I don't think we're going back to normal. I think, you know what I'm saying, Yahuwah is letting us know, get your house in order. And he's gonna bring a lot of more pestilence and things are coming. Con, con. <clears throat> I want to come to the book. I want to read uh as many people I think have Daniel chapter seven misconstrued. I think some people are some people have taught and it's probably still teaching that Daniel chapter seven, these four beasts in here, um <clears throat> have actually happened in the past already. I want to just touch on this um, real quick. You can on you mind? Oh, yo, do your thing. You know, I follow your lead, brother. You do your thing, man. Yeah, let me, let me go ahead, okay? Let me go ahead and I want to just read this real quick. I don't want to read the whole thing, but I want to touch certain verses in Daniel chapter 7, you know, and uh, I want to see uh, who's saying that this is, that these bees here has already risen in the earth already, according to this, according to what I'm going to read, or how I understand it. These four beasts have not risen up yet in the past. This beast here are, are definitely in our future. So Daniel chapter 7 and verse 1, it reads, In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and vision of his head upon his bed. Uh, then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Okay, so now we got to go into the, what he what his vision and his dream was and what he actually penned down. It says, Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea, which would be the Mediterranean Sea. And four great beasts came up from the sea, divers one from another. Uh, the first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings were plucked and it was uh, it was lifted up from the earth and made and made to stand upon the feet as a man and a man's heart was given to it 
Now, many people are saying this is the Babylonian Empire. I don't see how this can be the Babylonian Empire. How does this fit? How does this fit? How can it, how can this actually fit the Babylonian Empire when the first verse says, let me read it again, okay, demo the missed it. The first verse says, in the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon. This is the last king of Babylon is when he got this vision. How can now he's getting a vision of this beast coming up out the earth when we he's already in the end of the Babylonian Empire? It's the last king that he's getting his vision in. So how, how can this first beast be the Babylonian Empire? This is saying that they've they risen out of the sea. I mean, they, they are to rise up and to come up. But he's in the Babylonian Empire. They're already risen up already. So that that game wouldn't make any sense. This this is speaking of something future that he was given. So that that to me will rule out uh, Babylon immediately. Okay, uh, Babylon being that beast, he's already in the Babylonian Empire. Uh, verse five. Uh, and behold, another beast, a second like a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it, uh, of it uh, between the teeth of it. And they said, uh, thus unto it, arise, devour much flesh. And now then they say that this particular beast, this bear, is the Persian and Mede Empire. Again, which again wouldn't make any sense at all. Because when you move over to the eighth chapter, the eighth chapter tells you what beast the Persian and Mede Empire is. The, the, the Persian and Mede Empire is the animal that had uh, two horns. It's a um, <clears throat> let me get it so, so we can get the correct understanding. Want to come to Daniel's chapter 8, and we want to come to the first verse. Daniel chapter 8, verse 1 says, In the third year of the reign of Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me, even unto me, Daniel, after the after that which appeared unto me at the first. Okay. Now, this is this is in his this is in his third year. The last one that we read in chapter seven. Okay, that was in that was in Belshazzar's first year. So now two years later, he's getting this other vision here. Verse two, Daniel chapter eight, verse two. And I saw in, and I saw in the vision, and it came to pass when I saw uh, that I was at Shushan the palace, which which is in the province of Elam. And I saw in a vision and was by the river uh, uh, Ulea. And I lifted up my eyes and saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram which had two horns. And the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. So this is definitely speaking of the Persian and Mede Empire with the two horns. Okay? We know we, we read clear down, clearly down. That the angel explained to him this vision, and it is the Persian and Mede Empire. That is that that is this ram that has two horns. Okay, so the Bible never calls an empire by uh, by two different beasts. They're always consistently when they're calling an empire by the exact same beast. So how in Daniel nine is going to be a bear, but then in Daniel chapter seven is going to be a ram. That's two different animals. Showing you that speaking of two different nations. So there is no way that 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 bear in Daniel chapter 7 can be the Persian and me Persian and me empire. I want to jump on down. <clears throat> when, let me jump on down to when this particular ram was actually um, taken over. And then um, taken over by another beast that came up after him. I want to jump on down to verse 5. Daniel chapter 8, verse 5, and as I was considering, behold, and he go came from the west on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground. And the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. We're just speaking of Alexander again. So you have the ram with the two horns, and then now you have this he goat that's coming to take to take over. Okay? So the the the, the goat takes down the ram. So that, that's that's the, the Grecian Empire taking down the ram, the Persian and Mede Empire, as the angel explained later on in the chapter. I want to jump down to Daniel chapter 8, verse 20. It says, The ram which thou sawest, having two horns, 
are the kings of Pedia of Media and Persia. So clearly in verse 20, it tells you who the ram is. Verse 21. And the rough goat is the king of Grecia. This is the Grecian Empire. And and the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. That is Alexander. Alexander the Greek. So we see again, this is two different, two different beasts. One is a ram and one is a bear. So in Daniel chapter 7, there's no there's there's absolutely no way that this second beast, this bear, can be the Persian and be the empire, because in the eighth chapter, it's a ram. Now I'm gonna come back to Daniel chapter 7. <clears throat> we're gonna start at verse 6. It said, After this I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl, the beast had also four heads. And dominion was given to it. So now, now then they're saying that this particular this leopard um, that had these wings on its back and it had these foreheads are, are the Greek Empire. The foreheads are supposed to be and it had the four generals after he died and the kingdom was split up to his four generals. Again, we see in the eighth chapter that the Greek Empire is a rough goat. Okay, it is not a leopard. It is a different animal again. It cannot be the same empire because it is a different animal. That's how you know that is a, that it is different. And the last one, uh, Daniel chapter seven, verse seven. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, the fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly, and it had great teeth, great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue. With the feet of it, and it was diverged from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns on it. Okay, then they said that this particular beast is supposed to be uh, the Roman Empire. Now, when you read about the Roman Empire earlier in the um, in the book of Daniel, it talks about the Roman Empire being part iron and part clay. It's part iron and part clay when, when the understanding was given, when Daniel gave the understanding of the statue that he saw. But this particular beast here, there is no part clay in it at all. It is completely strong and it's dreadful and it's terrible. It, it doesn't have no soft, soft part to it. There is no clay part here mentioned at all. It doesn't even mention exactly what this actually beast even is or, 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 or looks like. It just gives you certain things about it and what it does. And how terrible and exceeding it is. So I want to come down to verse 12. Verse 12 is going to clear this up. Verse, <clears throat> verse 11. Daniel chapter 7, verse 11. And I beheld them because of the voice of the great words of, uh, of the horn that spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body was destroyed and given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. So clearly here is saying that their dominion was taken away, the rest of the beasts, the other three beasts, but yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time, which wouldn't make any sense because each one of those empires in the past, they rule one after the other. They never rule at the same time, but these particular beasts here clearly is on the earth at the same time. Their lives were prolonged for a season. It says their lives. So they're there on the earth living all at the same time. So there's absolutely no, there's no way that these beasts in Daniel chapter 7 has risen up yet. They have not risen up yet. This, these beasts are in our future. These beasts are yet to arise up. And this is what you should be looking for. So they're talking about the end. Because these, if these beasts ain't here yet, because the Antichrist come out of one of these beasts. Obviously, the last one with the ten horns. And the one speaking all these, all these great words against the Most High. That would be him. So he comes out of this fourth beast. So we're still waiting for these beasts to arise up off the earth. The Antichrist to come out of one of them. Before we even begin to talk about, we're near the end. We are far from the end. So please, anyone talking about we're at the end, we are not at the end. We are actually far from the end, okay? 
maybe a, maybe possibly about a hundred years out, something like that. I'm just giving you rough, giving you rough estimate. And I can even go into um, the Messiah speaking of, of different things happening when when he gave his his understanding of right before he returns and answering the questions of the apostles as well. So uh, please stop saying that we're near the end or at the end because we're nowhere near at the end. We're far from it. There's a lot to go. People need to be studying, building up their faith. Because as the Messiah said, when he comes back, will he find faith? on the earth a lot of people talk about they have faith but faith without works is dead a lot of people talk about faith but they're not doing the things to prove their faith to prove to show their faith at all it's just a whole bunch of talk all right so with that who can i if anything you want you want to speak on i just want i want to address that to be clear on daniel chapter 7 that yeah i was gonna say if you want to put the link back in the chat i think uh i don't know if you know pat casino uh, he come from the biblical rumble room. He wanted to, I uh, think he wanted to get on. Um, I would say um, that beast with the, the 10, the 10 toes or the 10 horns and all that. I think that's uh, the, the Catholic church. Uh, you know what I'm saying? That bear, I, I think it's Russia. <clears throat> Cause uh, you know, Russia used to have uh, they, their animal symbol is the bear. So I, I do kind of agree with you on some of those things. You know, you know what I'm saying about these nations and these different animals being mentioned. So uh, you know, we, we got a ways to go, man. You know, like yo, like you said, get right with the most high. It's that time. I want to see what Pat Casino wanted to come on and, and uh address. Uh I don't know if you ever heard of the biblical rumble room. If not, I I'll bring you on there because a lot of times the uh the UA community be in there and we be battling. We had some British Israelites try to come in, but uh, with the information we hit them with, a lot of them actually left and got out of uh, got out of the Rumble Room because they were trying to say, "Oh, y'all, you know, we from Ham and uh, we was this and that." So, if you want to, because I I don't know, are we face uh, Facebook friends? If so, I'll go ahead and send you an invite to come into the uh, Rumble Room. Okay, the brothers here. Let me bring them on right quick. Okay. Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Mark. how you doing? Hey, Shalom, Shalom, everybody. Peace, peace. Uh, Sport Pack, Roy K. Perez, y'all from the Rumble Room. Uh, how's everybody doing? To walk, to walk. Cool, cool. <clears throat> oh, yeah, so um, um, I don't I don't want to take control of your, uh, your broadcast here. So I understand you were uh, talking about the uh, Daniel 7, the four beasts of Daniel 7? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. And you, uh, you, my understanding is that uh, you don't believe that they, <clears throat> that they have at least uh, any of those beasts have ar arisen yet. Right. They, they were saying that those beasts risen up in the past. They, they, they label them as the Babylonian, Persian, and me, Greeks, and Romans. And I say that those beasts don't fit them. Okay. Yeah, and I and I heard so I heard heard some of your breakdown. I heard some of your breakdown. <clears throat> um. So, so you don't believe that these four beasts coincide with the uh, with the various metals of the of Daniel's image in chapter two? Correct. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um. So, um, but you you do agree that at least three of those metals in Daniel chapter two stood for the stood for the kingdoms that have that were captive over Israel. Correct. Yes. Okay. And but the fourth, the fourth kingdom, um, is the is the fourth captivity. But what do you think about the kingdom of iron and clay? What do I? What do you mean? As far as what, what do I, what do I think? Do you what? feel? Do you believe that that has that that is the cap the the captivity the current captivity, or do you believe that it it went away? I think that. That would speak to the the, the Roman um, captivity. Would you say that that Roman captivity is still uh, going on today? I would say in in, in certain forms, yes. Okay. <clears throat> so if I were to say that that um, that that king that that last kingdom that fourth kingdom is still going on, would you disagree? No, I wouldn't disagree with that. 
Okay. All right. So it's safe to say that you at least believe that the fourth kingdom is still, we are in the fourth, we are in the fourth, fourth captivity. We're in the king, we're under the kingdom of iron and clay. Yeah. I would say we are under the kingdom of, 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 of iron and clay. I said, they, 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 I would admit that there are elements from that kingdom that these, the, the people that are in power still implement to, to, to this day. So is the king is the, has the kingdom been toppled? The kingdom of iron of clay, iron and clay been toppled, or is it still in power? As as far as it as far as it being in power, no. It's no. not in it's not in power, huh? That's what you're saying. No, it's, it's not in power. Like not like it was back then in the time of of the Messiah. No. <clears throat> um. Do you know what triggered the? Are you familiar with what triggered the end of that kingdom? They they kept getting sacked by the Germanic tribe to the point where their their kingdom just got weaker and weaker. To like you know what I'm saying they they could no longer defend it, and then it split into two. It was the it was the Eastern Roman Empire and the Western Roman Empire. So when it split, and then after that they was fighting each other. So um, it, it got to a point where it, eternal warfare eventually brought it down. Okay. <clears throat> um. Okay. So just to just to be fair. Um, I believe that the fourth kingdom is still in play. I believe that the the first through third kingdoms, the Bab I believe that, you know, as as it say, as it states in <clears throat> um Daniel chapter two, the gold is the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar, which is the which is the Babylonian Empire. I believe that the second was the Medes, which followed the the rule of the Babylonians. And and I also believe that the Greeks came after the Medes. Um, <clears throat> and we can see this uh, in Israelite narrative. We see the kingdom of Bab Babylon in, um, in Daniel. Uh, we see also the, uh, the Persian kingdom in Daniel, um, as well as Ezra and Nehemiah. Um, and, then, um, and then we see the kingdom of the, of the Greeks in the book of the Maccabees. Uh, uh, we also see the, Rome, the, the fourth kingdom uh, at the advent of the Messiah. <clears throat> and, and for the record, I do believe that, um, the various levels of this, uh, image in chapter two do coincide with, uh, with Daniel's chapter, the, with the four beasts in Je Daniel's chapter seven. And, and I'll explain why, um, <clears throat> in Daniel chapter two, um, D Daniel provides the narrative of the, of the captivities. Um, and he goes through each um, element, the gold, the silver, the brass, the um, iron and clay. And if we read in, <clears throat> I think if we start in chapter 41, I'm sorry, 40, and we go all the way to uh, 45, we see that this kingdom, even this kingdom has an end. Um, and uh, what follows the fall of this kingdom is... Uh, it, what, what what causes it is is I believe it's the uh, the rock that that destroys the statue, um, which I take to be the um, <clears throat> the coming of the Messiah. Um, and this rock, this this the Messiah is the rock, and and the Messiah, as we see in the books of the prophets, leads the restoration. Um, we can see this in um, Micah, Micah chapter I believe two verses twelve. Um, we see this in um, Ezekiel when the Messiah, I think it's either, either Ezekiel or Zechariah, maybe in both. The Messiah leads in the sacrifice. I think that might be Zechariah. Um, <clears throat> and then we also see it in Jeremiah 33, 18 through, I'm sorry, maybe 14, 14 through 26. And also Malachi 3, 1 through 6 as well. Um, so the Messiah leads the restoration, and we can also see that um, John the Baptist's father, uh, Zacharias, also understands that the Messiah is supposed to liberate Israel in uh, Luke chapter 1, 67 through 75. He speaks about a hope of <clears throat> liberation from the hand of all that hate Israel. Uh, and we even see in Acts chapter 1, I want to say... I forget what ver verse is it, but it's, it's before the Messiah sins, and the disciples ask the Messiah, "Will you, will you restore 
to us the kingdom. Will you now restore to us the kingdom? So there's a hope that the Messiah will lead. And so that coincides with Daniel, <clears throat> with the narrative that we see in Daniel chapter uh, two, uh, the Messiah is, is the liberator of Israel. Now we can see the same pattern um, of this narrative, of this captivity, this four captivity narrative um, that we see in Jan Daniel chapter two and Daniel chapter seven, okay? <clears throat> the fourth beast is subdued um, by the Messiah and the beast is allowed to wear, we see that the beast is allowed to wear out the saints, okay? <clears throat> this fourth beast, four kings shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and shall break it down and tread it in pieces. Pieces, okay? This is the same kingdom that, that is mingled amongst the people in, in Daniel chapter two. Um, and the 10 horns, talks about the 10 horns, and then he shall speak great words against the Most High, shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change the times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time, times, and the dividing of a time. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it in the end. Verse 27, and the kingdom of, and dominion of the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. Now, I believe this to be the elect of Israel, the 144,000 that we see in uh, Revelations, um, what was it, eight or seven, chapter seven or eight? Wait, I, would, I, want, to, I want to cut you up, brother. Can we, can we go to a point so we can begin understanding what you're saying? Sure, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Putting a lot out there. So let's, 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 let's address point for point so we can, we can be, we can see, can we come to an understanding here? Now, the first thing would be we know for we we know that according to Daniel chapter eight, the the the, the Persian and Mede Empire is known is is called by Aram. We agree, correct? Uh, yeah, uh, I believe so. Take, I'm, I'm I'm okay with taking us through the verses. I don't I don't mind. Okay, <clears throat> Daniel. Let's read it then. Daniel chapter eight. Mm -hmm. Get right to the point. Daniel chapter eight. I want to read verse three. It says, then I lifted up my eyes and saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram, which had two horns, and the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. So that's the ram. Now I'm going I'm to have the angel tell you who this ram is when it comes to the 20th verse. Then in chapter 8, verse 20, it says, the ram which thou sawest having two horns are the kings of Pedia and Persia. And, and, and Persia. Mm. So we know now by the angel who this ram is, is Media and Persia. Mm -hmm. But then when you read in Daniel chapter seven, they're saying that that Pisa and murder is this bear. It's a completely different animal. Now you would have to show where the scriptures call a nation by two different beasts. It does that nowhere to my understanding. So why would they call one nation by two different animals if it does it nowhere else? Well, these these uh these are two different visions, right? The two different uh one is a dream, or um, and one is a dream in chapter seven, and the other in chapter eight is a vision, right? Now they're both um in Daniel chapter seven. It says it's a dream and a vision in Daniel chapter seven, so it okay. is the same thing. Okay, no no problem, no problem. But but my point is that this is um this dream or this vision is happening at a different on a different occasion, correct? Yes. Right. So, so the dream in chapter seven is the first year of Belshazzar's reign. And in the second vision uh, in chapter eight is in the third vision of Belshazzar's reign. Right. Third year. Yes. OK, so so to speak on both of their visions, they're, they're different visions. They're different yeah. visions. But I but people are saying that it's the same kingdom though. Well, if we do the if we do the math, it, so we have four we have four great beasts, just like we have four um four levels of the of the image in chapter two. <clears throat> if we kind of do a comparison, there's four captivities, four um reigning captivities over Israel. So we see in we see in chapter two, it's a statue, and the statue is um, um, fashioned with different metals, um, not animals. Doesn't mean that doesn't mean that these kingdoms don't still coincide with the beast in chapter four. Like the gold is Nebuchadnezzar, 
and in this in the second vision the the kingdom of babylon's so in the in the first in the image the gold is the is the beast of babylon right it's the yeah. kingdom of babylon and in and in chapter 7 the first beast is is a babylon i'm saying you can you can you show in the bible where the, where the where the bible calls a nation by two different beasts i'm not sure what that's going to prove that's that, that will prove that 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 reasoning of these two different beasts being one nation would be incorrect. They're they're two separate visions. Yeah, but two separate vision. If they're two separate vision, then why are they saying speaking of the same kingdom? It, well, they're two de they're two depictions of the of the same thing. But and, but why would you call it a different animal then? Well, I don't know. You have to ask the Most High that. <laughs> I mean, we see I'm, even I'm, in I'm pointing out is a different animal because it's a different kingdom. That would make completely sense for you to say. And the two different animals are the same beast wouldn't make any sense because he's he's clearly calling a different because if 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 you're calling it a beast then you you you're pointing out the characteristics of that particular animal to 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 put some some of that characteristics upon upon that empire if i remember correctly the persian and Mede empire i think their nation logo was a ram that was their nation logo that that the empire logo was a ram it was never a bear so when you, when you go into the Persian and Mede Empire, there's nothing to correlate them to no bear. Wouldn't make any sense. You know what I'm saying? So when, 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 it, when the Bible calls an empire by a particular animal, there's something about that animal that you can relate to that particular empire. And I don't see where you can relate a bear to the Persian and Mede Empire. Okay. So, I mean, if, if, if that's what you choose to get hung up on, I guess, I mean, that's your choice. But, but what, 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 Let's me know that this that these four beasts coincide with the four levels of the statue in chapter two is the narrative. We have the we have the first beast, we have the second beast, we have the third beast, and the first beast is the beginning of the captivity, and this and the last beast, the fourth beast, co coincides with the fourth kingdom. We see the end come after the fourth kingdom, right? So when when the Messiah came, when the Messiah came. Israel was still under captivity of Rome. If we look today, Rome is still kind of the spiritual center of, you know, all the earth's activities, right? Like <clears throat> even, even the imams of Mecca, of Arabia, they meet with the Pope. Um, the Dalai Lama meets with the Pope. All the things that happen under the rule of uh, this, these European world powers, and they're all sort of like collective powers that have sort of ruled all of the corners of the earth. I mean, if we look at, at, into history with the colonialization, the European colonialization that happened all over the earth, all over the earth, we see that Europe is really kind of in control and the spiritual center where, you know, Europe, all the powers really kind of get their blessing from the Pope. Right. And there's even like if you um, look into the paperwork, we even I, I believe the, even the Vatican exacts a tribute from the world powers. I know we as American citizens, part of our taxes are collected by the IRS. Well, our taxes are collected by the IRS and the and the Vatican gets a exact portion of that. Right. So we still have this Rome, this kingdom of Rome that is sort of ruling the earth, but it's really kind of in decline, um, as we can see with today's current events. Um, so if we look in the last couple of verses, um, chapter 27 and 20, I'm sorry, for chapter 7, verse 27, 28, it talks about the end of the fourth captivity. It says, um, and but the judgment shall sit and they shall take away his dominion and to consume it and destroy it in the end. Uh, 27, and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. We can see these prophecies in Isaiah 14, chapter 60, chapter 61, and the last verse, and then I'll kind of I'll yield the mic. Um, Here, there too, is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my cogitation is oh, this last end of the um, end of the vision. But we can see that there's a parallel between the narrative of 
the the rise and fall of the beast in, Je in Je Daniel chapter seven, and uh, Daniel's image in, in chapter two. Okay, well the, well, the first thing is that in Daniel chapter seven, this fourth beast, there was nothing mentioned here about any clay. It's not this this beast is completely strong. There's nothing soft about it at all. Nothing is mentioned here about it being soft. I like to read it real quick. Daniel chapter seven, verse seven. But after this, I saw in the night vision, and behold, a fourth beast dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly and it had great iron teeth it devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it and it had ten horns now if i was to ask you identify to me who are these ten horns of the roman empire can you do that I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be prepared to know. I, I, I mean, you can make you can make estimations. Um, you could definitely make estimations, but uh, I think that when we sort of compare the visions, we compare the images in chapter two and chapter three. We sort of see the same message. The fourth kingdom is the last kingdom. It's going to be very powerful. Um, it's going to involve um, lots of people. So it's going to rule lots of people just like the fourth beast does in chapter seven. And uh, but eventually it's toppled over by by a messiah and his elect. Well, I mean, it's just if, simple if, that. If, if you were saying that the fourth empire is the last empire, then what about the Ottoman Turks Empire when 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 they was ruling? That, that's after the Roman Empire. Um yeah and and no yeah and no yeah I mean, rome rome was still rome was still kind of doing its thing i think um it's it definitely didn't have an emperor right it didn't it didn't rome didn't have an emperor but rome was still kind of ruled um it was just sort of like a fading kingdom i think i think it was it was pretty much um done at that point i think ottoman ottoman turks what I have to review what dates the Ottoman Turk kingdom, but I'm pretty sure that happened out that started happening after the uh kind of like after the Renaissance Renaissance period. And the Ottoman Turks, they the Turks are a they are a very um a very shrewd people. We're talking about the Turks. These are a people that have sort of been these people descend from the Khazarian kingdom. And up until now, so the Khazarians are really kind of the old Scythian kingdom. We have the Siths, which were, they were referred to as Siths in the age of like, we're talking about 63 BC. We're talking about the, um, during the time of the Greeks, like this, they have, they actually have a, a city called Scythopolis, which is not too far from, um, from the Northern territories, it's like near the Northern territories, Territories of Ephraim, you know, Israel, northern, northern kingdom. Bro, but um, understanding that we we do have another empire that rose up after the Roman Empire. The Ottoman Turk was an empire. Yeah, but where it fits in the narrative, if we're trying to if we're trying to fit it in the narrative, we have to we have to understand what the how the Khazarian people relate to it all. Um, I know all I can all I can say is that. Babylon Babylon has ruled Israel, okay? Persia and Medea have ruled Israel. Um, the Greeks have ruled Israel. And, and Rome has ruled Israel. And Rome has not um, ended its, its rule. And we know that the Roman kingdom has not ended because when the Roman, when the fourth kingdom, the Roman kingdom falls, that is when Israel is to be liberated. Rome is the last kingdom. So we have Ottoman Turks and we have a uh, we have an empire that we call the Ottoman Turk Empire, but 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 they could still be very well connected to Rome in some way. I, I don't know. I'm not prepared to have that discussion right now. I'd have to really kind of do my due diligence as far as the history goes. But I know that through the whole through the whole deal. Um, the the K, the Siths the Khazars um, these these people who the Greeks called Siths and and were eventually would eventually be known as Turks they've really kind of over time have sort of um, 
intermingled themselves in each of all of the rising powers. Um, even if we think about the Arab, the Islamic empire, right? Like what is this, is that the Roman empire? I, you know, I, I'm not prepared to make that argument, but we can see that in each of these, in each of these kingdoms, the, the, the Turks, who are also the Khazars and the Sis, have uh, become, have been mercenaries. Um, they've sent their daughters to marry into the royalty. And they've really kind of over time taken over, like, like subverted um, kingdoms and have, have become involved, have involved themselves in the nobility and have taken over societies. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I'm saying you you were saying Rome is the last the last empire, and it couldn't have been the last empire if there's an Ottoman Turk empire afterward. It wouldn't make any sense, right? In a, in a Islam, in an Islamic empire, right? Um, I mean, it it says the fourth kingdom. It doesn't say nowhere that that's the last kingdom. It just calls it the fourth. It doesn't say it's the last one. So so now it's on you to make it make sense of 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 the four kingdoms and the four beasts. I'm making I'm I'm making a point that that's not the end of it because we have the Ottoman Turk Empire, so that couldn't have been the end. There's more. Okay, so so if we talk about Daniel chapter two, right? Daniel chapter two, like, doesn't really leave much to the imagination, right? As far as what? As far as who the kingdoms are, right? Right. Okay. So we go through. This I, would, I, would, I mean, if 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 Daniel is given the vision of these four beasts in chapter seven, and and it's in the last king of the Babylonian Empire, and the vision is state that he saw these beasts rise up, meaning these beasts supposed to be coming up, coming into power, but he's already in the end of the Babylonian Empire. How can that first beast be the Babylonian Empire when he's already at the end of the Babylonian Empire? That wouldn't make any sense. It, 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 the division is saying that this beast is rising up. I, th I, I, think, I think when we're when we're trying to unlock uh, unlock the the code of these of these prophecies, I think what is really sort of our our starting point is the um, we see that the the first that the first um, that the head the gold head of the statue stands for the Babylonian kingdom. Um, another really, con like I think there's really can be no disagreement about that. Another thing that, that we, that there also can be no disagreement, mainly because these, these, these you know, this is, this stuff is in scripture and it's being stated pretty explicitly, is that the end of the fourth kingdom means the liberation of Israel. The end of the fourth beast means the liberation of Israel. Now if you can if you can demonstrate for the people that Israel has been liberated and the saints of the most high are in rule, by all means. But it's my impression that Israel is still very much dispersed and in captivity. So the end of the fourth uh the last the fourth kingdom and the fourth beast cannot be toppled over. It can it cannot be it, it, it cannot be toppled over because if they're toppled over, that signals the the liberation of Israel. Now, if you can show that lib, that Israel is walking around liberated and their kingdom is restored, by all means, I, I'll 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 concede. I'll see my point. You know, I'll see victory. <laughs> but but it's my impression that Israel is still very much in captivity. So the fourth kingdom is still uh, existing. And the last major the last major empire to to rule was rome now rome moved it, the empire moved to byzantium the byzantium involved the greeks and 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 in byzantium were also were turks so is our is 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 ottoman empire is the islamic empire a sort of um and the greeks and the greeks conquered arabia at least the uh, at least a good part uh, they, not the not the arabian peninsula but you know, if we if we're talking about all the way over into Iran, Afghanistan, like Alexander the Great was all the way over there, right? And that became that became like after he died, he passed it on to um, uh, Seleucus, and there was the Seleucid kings, right? Um, so, is are we are, you know is the Islamic Empire and the Ottoman Turk Empire extensions of 
maybe these past empires. I, I, I can't really say. All I know is that Israel is, isn't restored yet. Okay, I'm. <laughs> I'm saying the. I think. I think what you're doing, you're 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 jumbling stuff in there where it talks about this rock hitting the feet of of of, of this of, of the fourth kingdom, and you looking at that as that's the liberation of uh, Israel. I think. I think that's how you're you're in, you're interpreting that. Is that a mistake? That it has to be a mistake because if you're saying that's the last kingdom and the Messiah came in the Roman Empire, then what you be would then what you were saying that that the the, the 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 Messiah when he came toppled the Roman Empire, which we know that he didn't do that. No, I, I said I said that he didn't do that. I know. So so then so I'm saying so right. So you do that. So then you're saying that the Roman Empire it's still in rulership. Because when the Messiah comes, he's gonna come topple the Roman Empire. So you're saying today that the Roman Empire is ruling, and, and clearly we can see that there was a there was an Ottoman Turkish um, Ottoman Turk Empire, and we clearly see that the Roman Empire had split. There was a, there, there was an eastern and a, and, a, and a western half. It split in two, and then after that uh, they had the warfare. Um, you know, Constantine fighting with the with the Eastern Roman Empire and conquered them. So internal warfare, and eventually. That kingdom was 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 uh, was uh, abolished. It was taken down, clearly. But I think that um, that it becomes a complicated discussion when you want to um, when you want to discuss the Ottoman Empire, because we don't really like. It, could might the Ottoman Empire be an extension of the Roman Empire? You know, I, I'm not sure. Like, I like, make sense, bro. I, they were not Romans. Okay, so so what I'm saying is what I think there is. I think there's a they don't call themselves Roman, and that's fine. If you, if you disagree, that's fine. But 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 if we read the latter part of um of of Daniel two, right? Like it says, starting from I'm gonna go from forty to forty five, and the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these shall. In, so it break in pieces and bruise. 41, and whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of the potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it the strength of the iron. For, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. 42, and as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. 43, whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave to one another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. So there's division within the last kingdom at some point, because we have iron, we have iron, which is really kind of Rome, but then we see Rome kind of fade away, but there's still very much a spirit of Rome ruling within the world. If we look to a lot of the places that have been colonialized by these European powers, we read in Roman script, okay? We read in Roman, the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, those are Roman, those are, that's Roman script. Um, all of our languages are Latin-based languages. Like, you go into the East Asia, um, Far East and, and Russia and, and East Asia and on that side there there's different scripts right but in, here in the West it's largely all Roman script but even in the East there's still Roman rule um, in verse forty three whereas thou sawest whereas thou sawest sawest iron mixed with miry clay they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men but they shall not cleave to one another even as iron is not mixed with clay forty four last two verses. And in the days of these kingdoms shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all of these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. Okay, you tell me this doesn't sound like the, like the messianic uh, kingdom of the, of the saints in Gen Daniel chapter 7. Verse 45, for as much as thou saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain, without hands and that it breaketh in pieces 
uh, the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpreter, interpretation thereof sure. Telling me that fourth kingdom doesn't coincide with exactly what's happening in uh, chapter seven? No, can be because again, in chapter seven, you're talking about there is 10 horns there and there was an antichrist spoken of there. Nothing that is, is spoken of here. And it says in, in, it says in, 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 the, king, in the days of these kings, it says uh, he shall set up the kingdom. You see, setting up the kingdom in, in the days of that king. So the, the, the starting point of the kingdom being set up is from the Messiah. And that's why Christ talks about the kingdom of heaven is among you. He's, it, it's the setup of the kingdom story that, 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 that is not the end of the point. But that kingdom particularly passed away. But the, the, the kingdom that God is setting up is still being set up and built up. That, that process has not stopped yet. Okay, I mean, the, the, I can't. I, I'm not. I'm not gonna like beat you over the head with with I, my with my. I want to read one thing that like I said. I mean, like I said, if, if for the, the interpretation, you 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 would have to reconcile who these ten horns are. If not, then then that would be speculation. You have to be able to factor in the ten horns. Um, the the but, ten the ten horns of the fourth kingdom in Daniel, Daniel chapter seven. Yes, because you're saying that's the Roman Empire. You have to factor in the, the, that's the particular somewhere in the Roman Empire who these ten horns, who, who these ten horns are. At some at some point, the 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 iron mix, the iron begins to be miry clay, and the miry clay stands for the mingling of of the kingdom within all seed. If we talk about, if we go to verse twenty four, it says, "In the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise." And another shall arise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. So we have subjection, we have division happening even within the first, within the fourth beast of chapter seven, and and as as we see also in the fourth kingdom of Daniel chapter two. Yeah, when when did that happen? When did that happen? I, I can't I can't say that much. But what but what we see is the mingling of a di we see the four, a diverse diverse kingdoms diverse people in the last beast just as we see in the last kingdom of Daniel chapter two, right? So what we see is division within the last kingdom. It's still the same. So I'm what I'm trying to. I'm not necessarily trying to explain who the ten powers and the division, the ten kings are, and the you know division of the of the, of the last kingdom, chapter two. I'm just trying to show you that there is a reason to believe that very strong reason to believe that the the statue, the image in chapter two, does indeed coincide to the narrative of the fourth beast in Daniel chapter seven. That's all I'm trying to do. Well, I, I don't see how because I mean I don't see what kind of coincidence. Right. There, there, there is no mention of any kind of clay here in, in Daniel chapter seven. You have to, you, you, there's not, none of that is there. You have to, you have to show that, and that's not there. All right. Well, I mean, that's, 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 you know, that's, that's up to you. Your prerogative. I want to make point right here. But no, you, you would agree that those kingdoms um, uh, was on the earth, one after the other, not all at the same time. Correct. What do you mean? After the Babylonian reign, the Persian and Mede reign after them. I mean, when the Persian and Mede was reigning, the Babylonians wasn't reigning, correct? I believe uh, the Persians, the the Medi Med Persia Medi ended up subduing Babylon, I believe, no? Okay, so so the Persian and Mede took down the Babylonians, so they were not ruling right. at the same time, correct? Um, maybe That's a very complex conversation conversation because you know, when we talk about the rise and fall of empires, there's really no, like, it, it's not like, hooray, uh, this kingdom's reigning, uh, and that, and, and this signifies the end of another kingdom. Really, what happens? Kingdoms rise over time, and they usually take decades to really kind of reach prominence. And then kingdoms, sort of old kingdoms, passing kingdoms, sort of wither away. You know, Rome didn't didn't fall in a day. It really kind of just rotted out over time and lost control of all of the extreme regions that it kind of ruled over. Um, well, you think the Roman Empire was not conquered? Well, well, what do you mean? Conquered by who? <laughs> conquered by another kingdom. By other people. Well, 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 let's talk about it. What kingdom? 
The why, you, why are you laughing? Let's go. Who else? When, uh, no, you, if you have the answer, go ahead and say it. I'm, I'm, I'm entertaining your conversation. Go ahead. I'm saying you, you, you act like there, there's a kingdom, and the kingdom just fade away by itself, just like that, and nothing happened to it. Like, like we know constantly that when the Roman, when the Roman kingdom was up in the height, it was constantly getting sacked by the Germanic tribe that they call yes. barbarians. Yes, it was constantly under attack. So that means eventually they they succumb to the attack. It isn't that they just fade away on their own. Well, they, well, they, lost and, and, eventually they lost and they got conquered by somebody else. So, so Rome, Rome kind of went through various stages. Like it, it, it was the Roman Empire, like the classic Roman Empire, right? You have Julius Caesar, which I believe uh, he came, I believe, before before Christ. Like he was in like second century, and then we have we have the Roman Empire lasting even until the third and fourth centuries. Um, but then it, the, even Rome went through some changes, like the, the, the papacy went to Byzantium and Byzantium kind of became like almost the Eastern Roman kingdom. And there were certain that the, the kingdom was divided. There was a Eastern Roman empire. There was a Western Roman empire. And like gradually these, these empires faded away. You're right. The Germanic tribes, the Huns, they kind of came in and, and plagued. They plagued the, the the Roman Empire, but they didn't. They were eventually uh, subdued. They were. They eventually um, didn't. weren't a problem. There was a certain. There was a certain point where they weren't as much of a problem as they as they were during the, the classic the um, era. If I call, if I recall correctly. Okay, I want to. The point I want to make is that those kingdoms in the past did not rule at the same time. I mean, any, can you can you can you agree to that or no? Uh, I'm I'm sorry. The kingdoms in the past, the the Babylonians, Persian, the Mede, Greeks, and the Roman Empire, they did not rule at the same time on the earth. Correct. It, it's my impression. Yeah, no, they did their the the height of their glory work came at different times. It wasn't simultaneous. Okay. I want to read in Daniel chapter seven that these four beasts right here are ruling at the same. They're on the they're on the earth at the same time, according to this verse right here I'm about to read. So it, it can be those in the past. This verse is going to say it's going to prove you wrong. Daniel chapter seven, and I read it early in verse twelve. It says, as concerning the rest of the beasts, because in, in verse eleven one of the beasts was slain and he was cast into the flame. Then verse twelve is addressing the rest of the beasts. It says, as concerning the rest of the beasts. They they had their dominion taken away. It says, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. So that means that these other bees, they were ruling on at the same time. Their dominion was taken away from them, but their lives, meaning the kingdom, they it was prolonged for a season and a time. So they was on the earth at this these four bees you're talking about in Daniel chapter seven, they're ruling all that they on the earth at the same time. Yeah, but I don't think that uh, I don't think that really kind of says anything as far as their temporal rule. I think you have an image, and you have the rise of four different beasts. I also see that in at the end of the chapter, chapter, um, it talks about only the fourth beast, the fourth beast um, being subdued by the saints of the most high it doesn't really talk about the first and second and third beast i mean correct me if i'm wrong um but the but the last the saints of the most high are warring against the fourth beast um so what we're seeing is an image we're seeing animals that represent kingdoms it's not necessarily speaking to their time of rule but really sort of that they will bear a presence upon the earth a ruling presence upon the earth Okay, well, um, that that will rule out those four kingdoms in the past, then, because they didn't rule it; they were on the earth at the same time. If that's what you, if that's what you believe, then, then you know, who am I to say otherwise? You're entitled to your beliefs. I believe what the text is telling us. It says it right here. Okay, that I mean, I, obviously, I disagree. Okay, so if you, if that's what you believe, then that's fine. Okay, so then, then, um, exit Jesus, verse twelve for me in Daniel chapter seven, then. 
Verse 12, as concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives are prolonged for a season and a time. You know, as concerning the rest of the beasts, let's just read it in context. Um, um, I'll go from nine and we'll see because... Let's see. <clears throat> All right, let's just go through. The, let's just go through the chapter, just, just to be thorough. All right, in chapter chapter seven, verse one. In the year, in the first year of Belshazzar, king of uh, Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and a vision of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told us some of the matters. Verse two. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night and beheld the four winds of heaven strove upon the great sea. Verse three. And four great beasts came upon came up from the sea, diverse from one from another. The first was like a lion, had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand upon the feet as a man, and the man's heart was given to it. Verse 5, and behold, the, another beast, a second like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it in the mouth of it and between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, arise, devour much flesh. After this, I beheld and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads and dominion was given unto it. Um, verse seven, and after this, I saw in the night visions and behold a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue of the feet of it. And, uh, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had 10 horns. I considered the horns and behold, there came up among them another little horn before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and the mouth, mouth speaking great things. Verse nine, and I beheld, I beheld till the thrones were cast down. I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head was pure as wool. His throne was like a fiery flame and his wheels as a burning fire. A fiery steam issued and came forth from before him. Thousands and thousands ministered to him and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The judgment was set and the books were open. 11. I, I beheld them because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake, I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. Okay, so we have, we have after the fourth beast, still the other, the, the first through third beast, their, their lives were prolonged, okay? Their lives were prolonged, so they were, uh, they were allowed to remain kingdoms. Now, their dominion was taken away, okay? So they're not ruling. Babylon is no longer the Babylon of old. Um, Persia, Medea is still no longer the, the kingdom of old. Um, Greece is still is no longer the kingdom of old, right? Um, if we read in prophecy, the restoration of Israel, okay, these like the nations of the earth are going to serve. They're going to like, I believe Daniel, I'm sorry, Isaiah 60 talks about you'll be, you'll nourish off the breast of kings. All right. So while these people are still um um, subsisting. They're still alive. They're, they're just no longer captive over Israel because Israel is to be restored. Um, if we go into 13, I saw in the visions and beheld one like the son of man who came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days and they brought near and brought, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory now, when I read this, I'm thinking this is the son of David that is to serve as king in the messianic kingdom and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, languages should serve him. 
His dominion is everlasting dominion, okay? Obviously, we're talking about the Messiah, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. So we have this, this rock, right, that's, that's cut out of the mountain in chapter 2 that, that topples the, the last beast, right? And the same thing we see here in chapter 7. I'm saying you <laughs> in verse 12, you never exit Jesus the part where it says their lives were prolonged for a, it, and it tells you it says for a season and a time. Again, those those kingdoms in the past, once the Persian and Medo conquered the Babylonian Empire, the Babylonian Empire did not continue for no season and a time. It was done. It was the end of it. It conquered them. That was finished. When 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 uh, the mm. conquered the Persian and me, the Persian and me empire ceased. They conquered and was done. Their life wasn't prolonged for a season at a time. Okay, let's let's slow down for a second. So you don't think that there are any um, descendants of Nebuchadnezzar or any Kushites anymore? You don't believe there are any descendants of? It says, it says the 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 beast. Speaking of the the kingdom, the kingdom. Lives were prolonged for a season and a time. Not talking about no individuals in the kingdom. We're talking about the entire kingdom was was allowed to continue for a season and a time. Once the Persian and me took down the Babylonian Empire, they didn't continue for no season and a time. They was done. That was the end. Of the finished. Understand, Amayan, that just because the Babylonians were the Babylonian kingdom was conquered doesn't mean that there weren't any Babylonians. It doesn't mean that there weren't any descendants of Nebuchadnezzar or any of the royal families. Do you understand that? I'm not, okay, but I'm not saying that, bro. I'm saying that no. the kingdom was allowed to continue for a season and a time. The kingdom was standing, in other words. This is, this, these, these are conquered, fam like you have Babylon, okay, they were conquered by the by the Persian Medeans, all right? That doesn't mean, now, now, unless there's any record of the royal families of the old Babylonian kingdom being sort of genocided, okay, like if, if you can prove that, then fine. But it's my understanding that that there are still descendants of, of these old families. There are still, the descendants are still walking the earth today, all right? So, the, the 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 traces of their rule are still are still in the earth. They're just not ruling. Like if Persia is ruling over Babylon, those royal families are subjected to the power of um, of the conquered kingdom. Like when Israel was being ruled by the Greeks, there was still descendants of Judah. There was still sin, and I'm sure there were descendants of David walking around. There were descendants of Levi, descendants of Aaron. The, but but as we can see in the book of Maccabees, these people these people became subject to the rule of Rome. All the Maccabees they weren't supposed to do this, and which is this is which I I think why all of them were eventually killed. But they made alliances with the neighboring nations. Each of the Mac Judas Maccabee on down you know all of John Simon you know they all went to make um, alliances with the with the Ptolemies with Rome. And so um, you still have these conquering kingdoms ruling these, uh, occupying these regions and ruling these regions through by proxy of the royal families. They let the royal families administrate over the people many times. <clears throat> it's just that the people, the, the, these royal families aren't autonomous. There was, so when, 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 um, when Israel was conquered, I think Zedekiah was the last king, all right? And he was, I think he became, he got in trouble with the Babylonian rulership because he started bucking against their control. But I think he and maybe the last few kings before him were under control, at least economic control of, of Babylon. Um, uh, but, um, but Zedekiah was the last king and the whole nation went into exile and they hadn't had an autonomous, Israel hasn't had an autonomous king 
since Zedekiah, which is, is my understanding, Zerubbabel was the descendant of David, but he was never allowed to establish an autonomous kingdom. When the, and when we see in the Ezra and Nehemiah narratives, when the neighboring nations began to antagonize them du during the rebuild of the temple, they said, no, 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 we're not starting a king. They tried to accuse um, Israel to the ruling power. I believe it was um, maybe um, Cyrus or Darius. Um, that there were there was rumor of a king, and 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 Israel denied it. So now, according to the covenant, the Davidic covenant was that David should never lack a man on the throne. And so we know that during the captivity, David's not allowed to have. He's not allowed to be in rulership. The whole nation is not allowed to be in rulership. But we know that the restoration. Will, will be the continuance, the resuming of the Davidic rule, the, the promise of the Davidic covenant. Okay, so when we're, so, so what you're saying is that when we're talking about these beasts, we're just talking about the royal family there, right? Not, not a kingdom, correct? Say it again. I said, when, when, we, when this Bible talks about um, these beasts, you 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 were saying that these beasts and is the royal family then? I mean that's that's the that's 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 what I'm reasoning to myself. Obviously, those families aren't in rule, so the glory days of their kingdom is, 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 is obviously past. But it is, doesn't mean that they don't exist. So uh, so I, so again so so Daniel is not seeing the vision of four kingdoms. He's seeing four royal families. Then, according to what you're saying. No, the in the in the in the vision they're represented as as kingdoms. Don't don't the text say that they are kingdoms? Well, yeah, and they and they pre they were, but they lost the, those kingdoms lose dominion. Okay, so if if it, if it's saying then as concerning the rest of the beasts, which would be the rest of the kingdoms, that's what it would actually be because the beasts are four kingdoms. It'd be the rest of the kingdoms is saying. Not the rest of four royal family, rest of the kingdom. He's addressing the kingdoms. He says uh, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives, the lives of the kingdom, not of the royal family, of the kingdom, were prolonged for a season and a time. You you are breaking a whole kingdom down just to a royal family, and, and a kingdom is way more than just a royal family. A real family is not a kingdom. Okay. Right, right. I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not, if this is what you're bent on believing, you have every right to do so. Um, I think, I think you're wrong. Okay. Like, and I think that you have even a tougher job of explaining, like, if these kingdoms aren't or haven't come, come to pass, man, like, I think maybe you have a tougher job. It doesn't mean that it's that you're not possibly right. Um, I personally believe you're wrong. But what I don't want to do is just go back and forth over the same thing. I'm, I'm not going to do that. So, so with right. that said, with that said, I'll kind of um, I'll kind hang of on. You know, hold on, hold on. Go ahead. All right, stay on, stay on the panel. Surreal want to come on. He want to address the title. He want to address the thing about moderate. Stay, stay on the casino. Hey, uh, put the link in the thing so Surreal could come in. Uh, he said he wanted to talk about the the topic. I still got that that uh link up. So if you can, I mean, I'll bring him in. I know what you're trying to do. I'm trying to free your mind, Neo. But I can only show you the door. You're the one that has to walk through it. 